Good afternoon, the Honorable Professor Dr. Swandi MPD and our beloved friend. In this occasion, me, Emma Sirahayu, and my partner, Siti Nur Hidayah, we will explain and present our material about discourse analysis. This presentation will be divided into three sections three approach of discourse analysis for the first is conversational analysis consists with agency pairs openings closing turn taking and repair for the second is interactional sociolinguistic consists with data and methodologies contextualization stance intercultural communication and then the last is critical discourse analysis consists with contracts and critics and methodologies and connection. Conversational analysis Conversation has been considered as the most fundamental means of conducting human affairs since this is the prototypical kinds of language usage. The various Purpose of conversation are exchanging of information, creating and maintaining social relationship, negotiation of status and social roles, and deciding on and carrying out joint action or cooperation. The primary and overriding function of conversation is clearly the social function, for example, the maintenance of social relationship. In simple terms, English conversation can be described as an activity in which for the most part two or more people take turn at speaking. Typically, only one person speaks at a time and three tends to be an avoidance of silence between speaking turns. This is not true in all situations or societies. If more than one participant tries to talk at the same time, one of them usually stop, for example, where A stop until B has finished. In conversational analysis, for the most part, participants wait until one speaker indicates that he or she has finished, usually by signaling a completion point. Speakers can mark their turn as a complete in a number of ways, for example, by asking a question or by pausing at the end of a completed syntactic structure like a phrase or sentence. Other participants can indicate that they want to take the speaking turn and also in a number of ways. They can start to make short sound, usually repeated, while the speaker is talking and often use body shift or facial expression to signal that they have something to say. In agency pair, certain turns have specific follow-up turns associated with them. For example, questions take answers, greetings are returned by greeting, invitation by acceptance or refusal, and so on. Agency pairs comprise the turns, one of which directly follows the others. For example, is in question and answer agency pairs. The question is the first part, then the answer is the second part. Certain sequence of turns go together. For example, in the conversation question and answers, speaker 1. Where is the milk I bought this morning? Speaker 2. On the contrary, here the speaker 1 asks the question and the speaker 2 answers the question from the speaker 1. Another example about invitation and acceptance, speaker 1. I'm having some people to dinner on Saturday, and I'd really like you to come. Speaker 2. Sure. Here, in over, invitation or request, accept are conversationally preferred to refusal. So, acceptance is a preferred action, and refusal in a dispreferred action. For the example of invitation in refusal response, Speaker 1. Want to go out for a drink tonight? Speaker 2. Oh, I'd love to, but I have to study for a test. In addition, this preferred second part often begins with a token agreement or acceptance or with an expression of appreciation or apology and usually include an explanation like the speaker to show her or his apology first before rejecting the speaker one request of the invitation. And opening. 
The beginning of a conversation or opening will generally involve an exchange of greetings, stated by Skelgob in 1986. Opening is one area where conversational opening have been examined in detail is the area of telephone conversation. According to Skelgov in 1986, analyzed a large data set of phone openings to come up with this canonical opening for American private telephone conversation. There are five sequences. The first is summons answer sequence. Second is identification recognition sequence. Third is greeting sequence. And then how are you sequence. And the last is Reason for call sequence. For example, speaker 1. Is that Janet? Speaker 2. Yeah. Then closing. Pre-closing signal which serve to negotiate the actual closing. These signals may take the form of a gesture or a physical movement such as rising from a chair or adjusting physical posture in some ways, they signal that the conversation is being close. In examples, well, I think that's all and I will let you go now. Actual closing may involve several steps. First, the closing down of a topic. For example, so that's a grid or one o'clock. Then, repeated by the other party or unknowledge in some form. Uh, okay, okay. A possible further acknowledgement of the nature of the exchange. For example, good to see you. Thanks again. Or see you soon. And last is an exchange or very well. For example, bye bye. Another example of closing. A. So, that's agreed. B. Yep, agreed. A. Good. I knew you would. B. Yes, no problem, really. A. Thanks for the help. B. Don't mention it. B. A. Okay, I will be back soon. B. Okay, then bye. Take care. A. Bye. In turn taking, participant must tacitly agree on who should speak when. A useful way to uncover the conversation of turn taking is to observe what happens when they break down. When a participant fails to take the floor despite indication that it is his turn, other speaker usually pause and then someone else beginning speaking. When such competition arises in casual conversation, a speaker may either quickly relinquish the floor or turn up the volume and continue speaking. Both silence and simultaneous speaking are serious problems in conversation, which the turn-taking norms are designed to minimize. Repair mechanisms for dealing with turn-taking errors and violations are obviously available for use. For example, if two parties find themselves talking at the same time, one of them will stop prematurely to repair the overlap. Then, in multi-party conversation, the last speaker can select who will speak next, or the next speaker can select himself. If the last speaker doesn't select the next speaker, Anyone may take the floor, often by beginning the turn at an accelerated pace, so as to prevent other potential claims for the floors. There are two simple rules of turn taking. The speaker signal when they wish to end their turn, selecting the next speaker or leaving the choice open. And then the next speaker takes the floor by beginning to talk. Repair. Repair is the way speakers correct things they or someone else has said and check what they have understood in a conversation. 
Repair is often done through self-repairs and other repairs. Self-repair occurs when the speaker seeks to clarify in some way what is being said and not being understood, or correct or further elaborate on what has been said. An other initiated repair is interjection by a listener. For example, excuse me or what may be an attempt to seek some kind of clarification. Institutional talk. Institutional interaction by contrast generally involve a reduction in the range of interactional practices deployed by the participant. Restriction in the context they can be deployed in and it frequently involves some specialization and specification of the interactional relevance of the practices that remain. The relationship between ordinary conversation and institutional talk can be understood as that between a master institution and its more resisted local variant. Relative to the institution of conversation, the law court, school, news interviews, doctor-patient interaction, etc. are more comparatively recent inventions that have undergone a great deal of social change. Okay, for the next term is about interactional sociolinguistic. Interactional sociolinguistics is an approach to discourse analysis, which incorporates the analysis of conversation with attention to broader macro societal norms, values, and ideologies. And the focus is on diversity and intercultural communication, on how differences in communicative practice can contribute to discrimination. In this approach, we can use qualitative and quantitative methods. For qualitative methods, there are ethnographies, interviews, online discourse, and surveys about language use and attitudes. And in this case, quantitative can support the qualitative methods to get the maximum data. In interactional sociolinguistic, there is a contextualization. Contextualization is verbal and nonverbal signal which help interlocutor to process and interpret the utterance in conversation. The contextualization includes intonation, accents, body language, type of language, and facial expressions. In interactional sociolinguistic, there is also stance. Stance is the use of language to position oneself with regard to other interlocutors as well as attitudes and ideologies being discussed. According to Jeff 2009, social identity can thus be seen as the culmination of stance taken over time. In any interaction, speakers use language to position themselves in multiple ways. They take a stance toward their own utterance and those of others, toward ideologies reference in this utterance and toward the speakers themselves. Then, one type of conversational configuration often examined within the interactional sociolinguistic framework is intercultural communication. Verbal exchange which involve people from different cultural backgrounds can more easily go wrong than those that involve people who share the same cultural background. The ability to expose enough of the implicit meaning to make for a satisfactory encounter between strangers or culturally different speakers requires communicative flexibility. Not everyone has such communicative flexibility, this ability to cross cultural boundaries. The last is about critical discourse analysis. Critical discourse analysis is an approach to discourse analysis which seeks to discover how inequalities are encoded in and reproduced through language use. Critical discourse analysis focus on language which has a social goal and the concept of critical discourse analysis are discourse, social power, and hegemony. The difference between conversational analysis and critical discourse analysis resides on the problem 
and in the way to analyze it. Conversational analysis focus on the pattern of communication in language in use to unfoil the social acts and those patterns in act. While critical discourse analysis studies the social phenomena in terms of the ritual and institutional practice by revealing structure of power and unmaking ideologies. And the difference from methodologies and connections view. Critical discourse analysis is not a method of discourse analysis, but a way of viewing the world which influence how text and talk are analyzed. One way of doing critical discourse analysis is what is called the discourse historical approach, according to Waldeck and Mayer 2001. This approach looks at discourse with a focus on how it is embedded in the social historical context. And the critical discourse analysis is composed of four main steps. The first is having an authentic text or discourse from any social event to be analyzed, then the interpretation of them that may reveal any structure of power or domination or exploitation, and the theories from the interpretation, and the last is the conceptualization of the theories, relation, and the assumptions. There are some researchers who use critical discourse analysis in their approach. For example, Fundit, who studied how in everyday conversations as well as in institutional text and talk in among social elites, and also Lazar, who examines of a family life advertising combined in Singapore, and there is also an analysis of British newspapers. Another example is from Rogers and Mosley 2008 who analyzed a discussion among pre-service teachers concerning racial literacy that focus on children's books and address issues of racial representation, definition of anti-racism, and white privilege. And then the last example is from Krasanowski 2011 who discussed the productive relationship between critical discourse analysis and ethnography. Okay, that's all from our explanation about the 11 chapter. So this chapter introduces three approaches to the analysis of discourse. The first is conversational analysis, which has grown out of ethnomethodology. And the second is interact interactional sociolinguistic, which being an umbrella term for ways of analyzing conversation which incorporate the larger societal norms and values. And the last is critical discourse analysis, which is a method designed to show how social inequality is reproduced through language use. That's it, our discussion of discourse analysis. Me and my partner would like to say thank you for your attention. See you next time.